ladies and gentlemen, Ted Koppel. There is a scene in the movie based on Stephen King's novel, The Shining, in which Jack Nicholson, in one of his all too rare appearances as a homicidal maniac, <laughs> breaks through a bathroom door with an axe. And as he shoves his head through the splintered wood, he confronts his cowering wife, terrified on the bathroom floor, and sings out, Here's Johnny. <laughs> I don't think there was a single moviegoer in America who at that point turned to the person next to them and said, Johnny who? The rest of us who may lay claim to a small slice of fame or notoriety are obliged to share our names. Ted. Kennedy or Danson? <laughs> Barbara. Walters or Streisand? Michael. Jackson or Jordan? Frank. Frank. Sinatra or Purdue? <laughs> there are probably a few hundred thousand people in this country who share the name John, but there is only one Johnny. Johnny is unique, a singular talent who for 30 years has always been reliably available at the same time and place to help ease our way through national crises, natural disasters, and personal travail. It has always been easy to underestimate Johnny Carson, because what he does, he does so gracefully, with such apparent lack of effort. Over the last couple of years, Johnny and I have come to know each other a little more personally, which has confirmed, for me, what millions of Americans have always suspected, and what may be the highest praise that you can give a person. Yes, you are a man of singular talent, Johnny, but you are also a man that all of us would like to have as a friend. For 30 years, he tucked us in, and we lay in the dark and laughed. Name something you'd find on a farm. Yes, name something you'd find on a farm. Well. Is there a well? <laughs> There's a well. You've got to remember one answer, Ron. Are you going to call it? Here's Johnny. He was a magic man with something else up his sleeve. An act and a name. Then came a new kind of magic. A little black box. Who knew what was in the air? Even those on the inside were making it up as they went along. My name's Johnny Carson, and this program is called The Squirrel's Nest. And uh, we hope this program won't let you down. And uh, frankly, uh, we know it will. He was hired on the West Coast as an announcer until he bounced around some ideas of his own. He got a $25 budget and a crack at his own local program. He 
it was a rapid rise from writing for Red Skelton to hosting a new national show. But his stardom was short-lived. I'd let myself be made into a poor imitation, he said. He started back at the bottom, this time in New York. He re-examined the fundamentals of funny and what made comedy work for him. He concluded that his strength lay in the spontaneous and the unrehearsed. His gift for repartee made even the silliest game show worth watching and made him the network's biggest daytime draw. But television burns most brightly in the dark, and the man who owned the night was Jack Parr. When he quit, they said no one could carry the weight. Least of all, a low-key daytime game show guy. He went out there as Johnny Carson and stayed that way for 30 years. To all the girls who shared my life, <laughs> now are someone else's wife. I'm glad they came along. I dedicate this song to all the girls I've loved before. I, I don't really want to handle this because uh, they could break, couldn't they? This is a little sleeping bird. Isn't that cute? Yeah. See, that's that sleeping. Now, here's a, here's a, this is a... Uh, that candle. That's a nice little candle. That's a candle. Wow. <laughs> Look at this one, Johnny. See, if you look an animal right in the face and talk to them, you'd say, then you know you're not scared. <laughs> he earned his success night after night and grew into a permanent, reassuring fixture of American life. Our measure of comic grace. Good evening, this is Walter Cronkite. For the past 19 years, I've been sitting at this desk reporting all of the major news stories in the world. Tonight is my final broadcast, and I would like to add one personal note. For God's sakes, knock off that tickety, tickety, tickety. Did you turn to try to come to my birthday? <laughs> Can I come to your birthday? Yeah. Where's the party going to be? In Disneyland. In Disneyland. <laughs> what? I don't know when your birthday is. You know when my birthday is? Yeah. When? October 23rd, 1925. <laughs> for all of you, for the last. The class that you showed Make it one for my baby And one more for the road That long, long
gentleman, David Letterman. Thank you very much. Seriously, <laughs> don't you think Ted Koppel may be just a little too funny to be a newsman? <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here. Uh, the real reason I'm here, of course, uh, the woman who keeps breaking into my house said she needed some time to herself, so I said, all right, I'll just... <laughs> if you get a chance, uh, try to attend the, the party right after the program. Uh, I just found out that uh, Sir George Schulte and Little Richard will be at the same table, so that'll be... <laughs> I just love to eavesdrop on that conversation. <laughs> it must mean a, a great deal to Johnny Carson to have me here tonight. This man was on at 11.30 every night for 30 years. I've been on at 11.30 every night for three months. Thank you. <laughs> In 1975, I moved from Indianapolis and went to Los Angeles to pursue a career in stand-up comedy. And one of my secret dreams was to be a guest on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. I went on that show in 1978, and it was and still is the biggest thrill of my professional life. A couple of months after that, Johnny w was nice enough to offer me a position as guest host on the rare occasion when he would take a night off. <laughs> and there is nothing that I am today any more proud of than my association with Johnny Carson. It's, it's unlikely we will ever see anyone like him again on television. So Johnny, as a way of trying to say thank you, tonight I have prepared a brief but very special presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have here in my hand tonight's top ten list. The category of the list this evening, top ten things we miss about Johnny Carson. Here we go. Number ten. Got laughs without cheap gimmicks like top ten list. Number nine. Karnak more entertaining than Psychic Friends Network. Number eight, always gave 110% despite back-breaking three-day work week. <laughs> Number seven, the way he'd sometimes get confused and accidentally pay me alimony. Number six, did groundbreaking cut off your sloss and jokes years before anyone had ever heard of Lorena Bobbitt. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff Koppel doesn't have the guts to do. <laughs> Number five, when he's dressed as Aunt Blabby, he's really a very good kisser. Number four, the way he'd swat Ed with a rolled up newspaper whenever Ed belched up gin. Uh, number three, 35 years on the air and he never once said, but a Fuko. Number two, the admirable way he never switched networks just for a bigger paycheck. <laughs> and the number one thing we miss about Johnny, his don't ask, don't tell policy regarding Doc. There you go.
This has been a pretty good year for the state of Nebraska. The University of Nebraska Cornhuskers are the nation's top-ranked football team, and one of her sons was named to receive the Kennedy Center honor. Johnny Carson has been, very quietly, revealing it here tonight, very generous to the university over the years. And a few of the students just wanted to come here tonight and say, thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Mr. Carson, the reason we're here tonight, you know, Mr. President, if we'd done this about a year ago, they probably would have picked a trumpet player to speak. <laughs> Mr. Carson, we'd all like to thank you. We are so very proud to be Nebraskans. We know that very many people like to think of Midwesterners as being pretty square. But how can that be when the hippest guy in America is from Norfolk, Nebraska? <laughs> and so, sir, we'd like to thank you for everything that you've done. And now, we've learned a special song, especially for tonight, for you. Gentlemen, Doc Severinsen. 